So the first question here, 1.1, is just in whether you know what a vector is and what a scalar is, right? So it says that uh, which one of the following combinations consists of only scalar quantities, right? So we only have a magnitude and not a direction. So let's look at option A. Option A says um, velocity, speed, and time. We know that uh, with velocity, you have to provide uh, the direction right so option a cannot be our answer and then option b says time distance and speed right time there's only a magnitude distance there's only a magnitude right distance is not displace displacement and then speed is only the magnitude of the velocity right so option b here for 1.1 is definitely our answer and then 1.2 says that uh, the acceleration due to gravity on earth is g right which of the following uh, represents the acceleration due to gravity on a planet that has twice the mass and half the radius of the earth so let me show you how we solve this kind of problems so we know that uh, the gravitational acceleration right will be equals to g the mass divided by r squared this is how you determine it right but then now we are told that uh this g nu right let's call it g nu is equals to uh g is a constant right but then now we have twice the mass so instead of m we have 2m and then we have half the radius of the earth so instead of r we have 1 divided by 2 r squared right so g nu uh, will be equals to 2 uh, multiplied by gm uh, divided by so 1 divided by 2 r squared right you're gonna get 1 divided by 4 r squared so we have 1 divided by 4 uh, r squared right so if you uh, write this nicely we're gonna get g nu being equals to 2 divided by 1 divided by 4 multiplied by g m divided by r squared and then this is the g we started with right the g of the f so what are we saying we're saying that g nu is equals to 2 divided by 1 divided by 4 that will be 8 right multiplied by g so we have 8 g and that is option d right so for 1.2 uh, our answer is D, right? So 1.1, we said the answer is B. 1.2, we say the answer is D. Now let's do 1.3. So 1.3 is saying that a ball is, project, is projected vertically upwards from the ground and reaches its maximum height after a while, obviously. And then we can ignore the effects of friction. How will the acceleration and total mechanical energy of the ball at its maximum height compared to that immediately after it was projected right so let's look at the acceleration first so the acceleration at any point of the motion is always equals to 9.8 right there's a misconception that at the turning point when velocity is zero the acceleration is also zero but then that it is not true acceleration will always be 9.8 right so acceleration here we're only looking at options that says equal to equal to now we can look at the total mechanical energy right so we know that in a closed system the total mechanical energy is conserved right uh, ep plus ek should always be equal to ep plus ek right in a closed system so the mechanical energy after uh, it was projected will be equal to the mechanical energy uh, at the maximum height right so here we're looking for equal to on total mechanical energy and that is option a right so the answer for 1.3 uh, is definitely a because the acceleration is equal to and the total mechani mechanical energy is equal to right at the maximum height all the kinetic energy will be converted to potential energy basically and then 1.4 1.4 is saying that uh, a car travels at a constant velocity along a horizontal road. A constant frictional force acts on a car during its motion. Which of the following statements about the power dissipated uh, by the engine of the car during the motion is correct, right? So we have velocity here. We have velocity, which we know is constant, right? And then we have a constant frictional force, right? So let's have a free body diagram here to see what's happening. So we have a car that is moving at constant velocity, right? If it is moving at constant velocity, the forces are balanced, right? So frictional force, right? That is pulling uh, the car um, in the opposite direction of the motion should be equal to 
uh, the force right uh, that is pulling the car uh, in the direction of the motion so the force uh, due to friction is equal to the force due by the engine right basically those two are equals to each other that's why we have a constant velocity right so now uh, we're talking about power we have to uh, use a formula of power that has the variables we have right so we have the forces and we have constant velocity so we're going to use that formula that says that uh, the power is equals to the force multiplied by uh, the velocity during the motion the force due by the engine is still the same right because uh, we're still moving at constant velocity if the force increased then we wouldn't be moving at constant uh, velocity but we would be uh, accelerating instead right uh, so we have a constant force and then a constant velocity right so the power should remain the same if the force is constant and the velocity is constant so 1.4 it looks like the answer here we're going to go with t so the power remains the same and then uh, 1.5 uh, this is a tricky one block x is placed on a horizontal table and is connected to block y uh, and then uh, the pass uh, are passing over frictionless pulling a constant frictional force x on block x while it moves to the right right so we're moving to that direction and there's some constant uh, frictional force p q and r are points on the table such that the distance from p to q is equal to the distance from q to r okay and then when block x reaches point q so at this point here at q uh, the string is cut and the block x continues to move towards uh, the point r you know the effects of air friction and then let's consider the following <laughs> uh, statements so the reason why i'm saying this kind of questions are difficult is that you have to be 100 percent sure there is no guessing right because we have one two three and then we have a b c d you have to be very certain of what you say so let's consider the statements that uh, they say we must consider so the first statement the work done by the frictional force acting on block x is greater when the block moves from point b to point q than when the block moves from point q to point r right let's look at it and see if it's true or not right so we know that the work done will be equal to the frictional force multiplied by uh, the distance uh, delta x right but we know that the distance from p to q and q to r is the same so delta x is just a uh, constant throughout the entire motion right now let's look at the frictional force and see if it's going to change from p to q and q to r right so what is frictional force frictional force is equal to the coefficient of static friction right multiplied by the normal force the normal force is not changing the coefficient is not changing because it's, it is due uh, to the material of the surface right so the work done by frictional force is the same throughout uh, the entire motion so the first option here is incorrect because we have proved that uh, the work done by the frictional force uh, is the same from p to q and from q to r right let's look at the second option so the second option here is saying that both the momentum and kinetic energy of block x decrease when the block moves from point q to r right so let's have a free body diagram for when the uh, object moves from q to r so from q to r we no longer have uh, the force due to the tension right because initially from p to q uh, we had a frictional force opposing and a tensional a tension force pulling right now we no longer have this tension force right so even though our block is still moving towards r is decelerating right its velocity is going down because it's being uh held back by friction eventually it is going to stop right so we say that uh, the velocity is definitely uh, decreasing uh, from q to r right but in the same time we know that p is equal to m multiplied by v right that's the momentum so if the velocity goes down then the momentum also goes down right another thing we have to worry about is the kinetic energy uh, we're saying that kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared again if velocity goes down the kinetic energy should go down so uh, the second option is in both momentum and kinetic energy of block x decrease when the block moves from point q to r this is correct right clearly we have demonstrated that is it is indeed decreasing both of them and then now uh the third option the total mechanical energy of block x remains constant when the block moves from point q to point r so from point q to r uh, there's no way our mechanical energy will remain conserved because uh, we know fully well that 
Uh, for mechanical energy to be conserved, we need to be in a closed system, right? Since here we have frictional force, there isn't any of that, right? So option three is incorrect. So uh, here it seems like uh, the answer we're going with is option B because only uh, the second option is true. So 1.6, uh, quite an easy one, right? Nothing complicated here. Uh, light emitted from a distant star contains a spectral line X of frequency F. The spectral lines of the star when observed on earth are red shifted so before we go any further if we hear about red shift we know that the star is moving away and the frequency observed is less than that emission right so let's look at our option here we have option um so moving away away so a is moving away and c is moving away and then uh, observed frequency is smaller than f so we'll go in with option d uh, option c for 1.6 right uh, because uh redshift uh the motion of the star moving away from the earth and the frequency observed uh f it should be less than that emitted and yeah that's you know 1.6 1.7 <laughs> A proton and an electron at a distance are apart. The magnitude of the electrostatic force that they exert on each other is F, right? Uh, which one of the following graphs show the relationship between F and R squared, right? As the proton and the electron approach each other. So we know that electrostatic force says that F is equal to K, uh, Q1, Q2 divided by uh, R squared, right? Obviously here, F is inversely proportional to r squared right so option a cannot be correct because option a is a straight line with a positive slope right and that's not what we're looking for and then option b um as r squared increases f increases and we know looking at this formula that if r squared increases then f will go down so there's no way a is correct and there's no way b is correct right now we're left with uh, c and d let's look at d first d clearly is a straight line that is sloping down right we have y is equal to some negative slope uh, x plus c but our equation is not a straight line it's easy to see right so d cannot be our answer the only option we're left with here is definitely c and that's what we're going with for 1.7 and uh 1.8 uh this is an easy one uh 1.8 uh is the same kind of question that we answered in question 8 of the question paper right you should definitely check that out so this question here is saying that the emf of a battery is uh e and its internal resistance is r honestly this information doesn't matter let's just look at what the question is saying which of the following equations represents the reading on voltmeter v1 in terms of the readings on the other voltmeters right so let's look at v1 v1 is connected across uh the terminals of the battery right and then this current flow into the external circuit because this switch s here is closed right so what is v1 reading v1 is the reading v external right v1 is reading v external we, we we talked about this in detail on the uh, problem of telling about question 8 of this question paper you should really check it out so v1 is reading v external right so what is v external v external is the uh voltage across r1 right which is v2 plus vp right vp can either be v3 or v4 because the reading in v3 and v4 will be the same so now uh, we're saying that v2 plus v3 is equal to v1 or v2 plus v4 is equal to v1 so let's look at our options and see which answer uh, that is <laughs> option a already saying that v1 is equal to v2 plus v3 so 1.8 we go in with option a we don't have to look at anything else right if there's another answer that is correct then there's something wrong with the equation paper so uh 1.9 1.9 is a bit uh tricky right <laughs> it's a bit tricky uh, unless you just memorize it but yeah it's a bit tricky and an ac generator consists of a coil which is rotated in a magnetic field the emf time graph for one complete rotation of the coil is shown below right uh, we have a period of 0 0.2 seconds there uh, if the frequency of rotation of the coil is now doubled which one of the following uh, graphs is correct for 
one complete rotation of the coil so we are interested on the time and on the emf right so let me take you back to uh grade 11 right so grade 11 says that emf is equals to minus the number of turns uh the change in the magnetic flux uh divided by the change in time in grade 10 we say that the period is equals to one divided by the frequency right so let's yeah analyze this if we double the speed of rotation of the coil we basically half in the time it takes to complete one cycle if we have the time then we're gonna have emf being equals to minus n right multiply by the change in the magnetic flux divided by delta t so if we have delta t we can rearrange this and get basically 2 divided by 1 right multiply by 2 divided by 1 right so now we have twice the emf if we have the time right so if we go and look at our graphs here from 150 we shall have 300 right uh, that is uh, c and b right so yeah we have solved uh one problem of the emf now let's solve the problem of the time uh we said that uh here the period is equals to one divided by frequency so if we double the speed of rotation of the coil that will have the period right so instead of 0 0.2 seconds uh we should have 0 0.1 seconds and that is option c right so option c is our correct one uh, so that's the answer for 1.9 and then 1.10 right? uh, 1.10 basically uh, so white light is passed through a cold gas and then through a prism as shown below a line spectrum is observed on the frequency um, which of the following correctly describes the energy transition of the atoms of the gas and the type of line spectrum observed in the screen I have the answer right in front of me right so you guys let me know in the comments what you wrote as the answer and then the first person who will get it right i'll pin it in the comments